In this video, I would like to give you an overview on how to conduct a cost effectiveness analysis and how to understand the results and what's special about them in the field of radiology. Let's have a look on how to conduct a cost effectiveness analysis with an example. And after this talk, you should be able to understand how to perform a cost effectiveness analysis. Uh, at least get an overview and how to interpret the results. So the definition, a cost effectiveness analysis is basically a quantitative method to assess whether the effect of an intervention is justified by its cost. And typically for that you compare two or more interventions with each other and that can be like therapeutic interventions, such as, such as a new medication or even surgical interventions, and uh, but also diagnostic tests, such as ultrasounds or MR scans and stuff like that. Here are some examples from the literature. Here are some examples from the literature. In the first study, they assessed the cost effectiveness of CT screening for lung cancer detection after they showed in an earlier study that CT screening of the lung can reduce mortality from lung cancer by about 20%. Now this is the overview on how to conduct a cost effectiveness analysis. You always start with a clinical question. Typically you have a test A which is better than test B and it's more expensive but then you want to know is it cost effective. That's basically your standard question. Then you have to develop a model. Uh, we talk about a simulation, a computer simulation. You could also alternatively do a cost effectiveness analysis parallel to a randomized controlled trial. But in the field of radiology, it's probably not so feasible, I would say. Anyways, once the model is finished, then you enter all the data, unit data regarding cost and obviously effectiveness and also disease specific parameters. And then you have the results. The computer is calculating the average cost and the average effectiveness for each strategy and you can compare the results. Now let's have a look here at this example regarding osteoporosis screening. Osteoporosis is defined as low bone mineral density and a uh, deterioration of the bone microarchitecture and your standard test is a DEXA test a bone mineral density test. But this test is not perfect and in fact about half of all patients with osteoporotic fractures are not detected or would have bone mineral density values that are not qualifying for an osteoporosis yet. Today we can assess the bone with CT and MRI in a much higher resolution so that we can even see the individual trabecula. And with that we can make a 3D model of the bone and you can now basically test this bone virtually and you can simulate falls to this hip for in this case and then you can calculate which force is needed to fracture a specific bone. This is the so-called bone strength and this test is about 10 times more expensive than the DEXA test and if you want to know whether this is now a cost-effective strategy to use for a screening, for example, you can define the following screening strategies. You can define there is no screening, DEXA screening and the virtual bone test screening. We did this and we asked this question and you can find the link to the paper in the description below. It was a computer simulation of 1 million postmenopausal women. Starting with age 55, we simulated this virtual cohort of 1 million postmenopausal women until every moon was dead and we did this in three month intervals. In each interval each woman could change her health state from no fracture to fracture or back or also die from the background mortality. Then we calculated the direct and indirect costs. The direct cost comprises the cost for screening, treating and also costs if fractures are occurring and stuff like that and indirect costs are basically the loss in production if they are not able to work anymore. To measure the effectiveness we calculated the quality adjusted life years. So basically it was a cost utility analysis. 
This is just a simplification of the model that we eventually did. If you want to know more about the specific model, please go and check the original publication. This is just to illustrate that in such a model you need to simulate the underlying disease in a very high detail. And you can see here we have the three strategies, no screening, DEXA screening and the virtual bone test screening. And now you have these decision nodes here. And this is just the example for the DEXA one here. So this would be the DEXA test. If you have a osteoporosis, you go this way. If there is no osteoporosis with a T-score above minus 2.5, a woman would go this path and eventually would get recalled for rescreening and then she would start here again. If the T-score would be minus 2.5 or lower, she would get treatment and would have a lower fracture risk. If she doesn't take the medication, her fracture risk would be slightly increased. So this is just an oversimplification of the final model that we eventually developed and this is just a short uh, overview or it's just a small part of the actual model uh, really. And uh, you can see it's getting big and complicated pretty fast. Once the model is finished you have to add all the data, data regarding efficacy, fracture risk, any probabilities you have in your model, mortality, cost, effectiveness, like quality adjusted life years and risk of complication and stuff like that. You find all this data from the published literature. Basically you want to have the best available evidence such as randomized controlled trials or meta-analysis. But also federal departments such as the Department of Health or Statistics etc. They can provide valuable information regarding uh, population-based data. Also insurance claims and hospital bills are important uh, sources for information regarding the cost for any procedure or treatment. And if you don't find any information for one of your variables, you can also ask an expert. Or you can do your own study to, uh, to find that variable basically or to get an answer to that variable and then insert it to the model once you have your result from your study. But that's pretty tedious. Another way is to just make an assumption, like a, a good guess. However, you need to simulate this with a very extensive sensitivity analysis at the end of your simulation to see the impact of, from your guess or estimate to the overall result. Now, once the computer has calculated the average cost and the average effectiveness, in this case in qualis, then you can plot them either shown here on a graph. Here we have in blue no screening and once we put in here the DEXA screening you can immediately see that the DEXA screening would be lower in cost. So we would save some money with DEXA screening but we would even get a little bit more effectiveness. So we would have more quality adjusted life years with DEXA. So we would save money with this test compared to no screening. So that's kind of a no-brainer and no screening would be called dominated. All right, now let's see what happens if we add the virtual bone test here. Again, you can see that the virtual bone test for screening would be less costly than no screening. So we would save money as well, but it's more expensive than the DEXA test. However, we get a lot more qualities here. Now, how can we assess whether this is cost effective or not? For this you have to calculate the incremental cost effectiveness ratio, the so-called ICER. This is basically your main outcome measure in, in your cost effectiveness analysis. And this is basically the difference in cost in relation to the difference in effectiveness for two interventions. In this case it would be around $2000 per quality. It sounds quite complicated but you can also say this value reflects the cost for a additional quality with the new strategy. So for $2,000 that we spent more with the virtual bone test compared to the DEXA test, we would get one more quality. Now for comparison, the study that I mentioned initially with the CT lung screening, they had an ICER of $81,000, so much higher. And typically, it depends on the country, but typically values below $100,000 in the United States and some European countries are considered to be cost effective. Below $50,000, it's pretty sure it's effective. In the UK, they sometimes refer to 20K or even 30K in pounds. So 
it's depending on the country. You can also show these results in a table, but it's basically just the same data. I prefer the, the graphic here. And just in our study, you can see that with no screening, we counted 900,000 fractures. You can basically count events in such a model, while with the virtual bone test, this number was reduced by about 30%, so that's quite impressive, and that would be a way how screening can save money to the public. Although you would have to initially spend some money up front. Now, there are some special considerations in the field of radiology. First of all, a MR scan or a CT scan or any other imaging modality, it's a diagnostic test and it's just like uh, one part in the algorithm for the detection of disease in patients and as such it has only indirect impact on the ultimate outcome of the patient. Also the interreader variability in uh, imaging modalities or imaging studies has an impact on the diagnostic performance. And what is even more complicating is that imaging studies are multidimensional typically, meaning that a cancer or a tumor can be at different locations, can have different sizes, and can infiltrate different organs, as opposed to a simple one-dimensional test, let's say a blood test, or even a pregnancy test, which only has two outcomes, positive or negative. All these points lead to an increased uncertainty, either structurally into the model, but also uncertainty, uncertainty into the results. Nevertheless, cost-effectiveness analysis is a integral part in research in the field of radiology as well. I'm well aware that this is just like an overview, a broad overview regarding cost-effectiveness analysis and not a, like a very detailed video, but I think it helps people that have no clue about cost-effectiveness analysis to get like a high level view on a topic. If you want to know more and read about it in more detail, go check the link down in the description. I put a few papers down there that are talking especially about uh, special consider considerations in the field of radiology and cost-effectiveness analysis. Now, if you like this video, comment below and give it a like. Also make sure to subscribe because it really helps me. And if you want to support me on a more personal level, go check out my Patreon account or Patreon campaign. And if you don't know what Patreon is, basically it's now the time to go and check the link down in the description.